Hi there, Lord Carlos here. This video is going to be recapping my week 12 run through the MCS. I went six and two and finished 22nd place. So I bubbled again, but it's okay. The list performed very well. You can see it here in front of you. This was before the ban list. So we are still playing one instant fusion. The only thing that I want to address with the deck is that post ban list, you can probably just replace this instant fusion with a reinforcement of the army. It is an easy swap in and out. It's not a direct replacement for the card, but it's an easy replacement. We'll define that 40th slot as the days go by. Otherwise, let's get started watching the replays. And as usual, make sure to check me out on Twitch at twitch.tv slash workalos. And thank you so much everybody for watching. Please enjoy. My first round match was against LSK. I'm not going to show off the entire match. The first two turns were basically LSK going first. I maxied them. They ended on a board of Fakros and Kit. I went Dweller Zeus to out it. And now I'm in this position where I have Zeus, Rhino, Sullyic, Crime, Maxi in hand, and I have one Keldo in the graveyard. LSK is about to start their second turn, so turn three, and they have a DD Crow, a Hoffness, and a Snow, and they will now top deck another Hoffness. So it may look like I have command over the board, but in reality, this Sullyak and Crime aren't going to do anything, especially after Snow beats over Rhino. However, there is a way to get out of this situation, and that is what I want to illustrate with this replay. Zeus has a very convenient second effect, or one of your cards gets destroyed, you can attach a card from your deck or extra deck to it, and I attached Handy Dandy Fairy Tale Snow. Now I top deck a Nagito. Seems like a pretty bad draw in this situation, right? It's not a tier limit name. But actually, this Agito is going to get me to a very advantageous board state. Hint, hint, it's Zeus again. If I crash that Agito into the snow, Zeus will trigger again. This time I can attach a Mudora from my graveyard so that I have one of each shuffler and now I can Zeus wipe the whole field, sending my Sullyak and Crime to get back into my tier engine and whatever LSK mills, I will at the very least have a shuffler for it. Now they have to use all of their snow activations in battle phase because if they don't, I can just attack with Zeus, attack with my own snow, and that's game. So they have to book of moon to Zeus. I go snow and here I'm able to make redoer. I have tier names in Grave, so Redoer gets me back into Engine, and now I'm in control of the game again. From this position, the victory is assured. My next game is against K. Randall. K. Randall has won the coin toss, and they've opened Imperm, Silent Graveyard, uh, Melfi Penny, the bane of my existence, Jet, and Maxi. I opened up Crow, Ash, Ash, Designator, and Crime. So I've completely bricked. K. Randall has a playable hand, but you're gonna see that they elect not to combo just yet. I respect this play as you have Max C and you have Silent Graveyard to try to stop me for a turn. That said, I still do think that it would have been better to just 
summon one of these level 2s, and then special the jet and try to play from there. Okay, immediately Max sees me, and joke's on them, I don't have a playable hand. Mission failed. We'll get him next time. I set Ash Blossom as, technically speaking, at this point, I'm under the assumption that K does not have another level 2, otherwise they would have played their turn. And at the moment, Jet does not beat over a defense position Ash Blossom. This can at the very least convert into another body for a link play next turn if I top deck a Murley and don't hit anything, for example. I immediately put them on their maxi as I really cannot afford to have them combo when I have so little interruptions. Funny that not even the Gigantic was able to beat over my defense position Ash Blossom. Here I immediately fire Rhino. Technically speaking, it would be more correct to normal summon Murley here, as Murley is both a level 2 and it's a dark monster, which means that Murley is actually capable of being linked off should our mills whiff. That said, I have Cross Out. So if one of these is Imperm, I'm pretty safe that I can cross it out and then my Rhino will resolve. And if the other one is a Cross Out, I have Crime. So it's pretty safe to say my Rhino will resolve, so I decide to just go for the guaranteed mill. Looking back at that previous play, it would have been more correct to actually send a Murley from my hand, as it could just be reborn off of the Kit Kalos effect. And then I would have actually kept the DD Crow in hand and had an additional interruption, which can counterbalance an elf. From this position, it's just a matter of attempting to clear the board, which is why I use Rhino Heart's effect. I didn't hit anything to fuse with, and so I really need to hit something now. From this moment, it's just a matter of clearing the board, and frankly, with mills like this, this is going to be no problem. Whatever top deck they have, it's not going to be enough. But surprise, surprise, top deck was never gonna matter. Milling Snow ensured that I had OTK with the help of good old number 60, Dugaris the Timeless. This is my round five match versus Bullet. This round was extremely unfortunate. I had just come off of a loss, my first loss of the tournament against TTK playing Pendulum. This was actually the first coin toss that I had won, and it will be the only coin toss that I win throughout the whole tournament. That said, look at my hand. I opened Hellbeck, Agito, two tactics, and Scream. My first coin toss, and this is what I opened. I was pretty upset pretty demoralized. The only thing I can do here is activate Scream as a bluff that I have Hoffness and pass. Now I'm fairly certain that 
I am not going to live this turn. The only interruption that I have is Kelbeck. Any strong start is enough to finish me. So let's see what happens. So Bullet is able to hit off of his Merle and off to the races. Somehow, due to missequencing, I'm able to stay alive, but I still don't have much here. The top deck of Mudora. Still no tyranny, still no way to activate my scream, but at the very least, I have something playable, and I know for a fact I'll be able to use talents this turn. I deliberate for a little bit about whether I should activate Mudora's effect, or if I should just normal summon it. If I normal summon Mudora, Bullet will use scream. And if they use Scream, I can use a Gito. And if I can use a Gito, I can reborn the Kelbeck in my graveyard. So in other words, by normal summoning Mudora, it's a bait that converts two cards into three bodies. Now Bullet doesn't hit anything off of their Scream, so I'm still not able to trigger Talons, but as I mentioned, I now have three level four bodies. This is a start. I use Dugaris here uh, to draw two. I'm fully expecting this to get Celiac, but when Bullet finally uses Celiac, that's gonna turn on my tactics as they'll surely use Kit afterwards. I decide to just let Bullet fuse. I don't want to lose the body that, on, that I have on field, and I have talents anyway. Also, they made a crucial mistake and activated two names. If we look back at the chain link, Bullet activated Merle and Siren. However, there was only one thing that they could fuse into, and that was Rule, because they don't have a Rhino Heart in Graveyard. Activating two names is something you sometimes do to play around DD Crow, but you have to make sure that if both names resolve, you have a plan to do with them. In this case, because both names resolved, Bullet ends up having to refuse the Rule Kalos that they just made. Here I finally fire off my Mudora, and I use it to put back all of Bullet's shufflers. This entire time, Bullet had three shufflers, and this was another reason why I did not fire off my Mudora on their attempt to fuse. I care a lot more about the shufflers in their graveyard than I do the monster they're gonna put on field, as I have talents. By taking the kit, I now have a dark play, and this will allow me to get to Rhino. I also hit a Mudora, which is nice, off the Scream Mills. Here I make a very crucial mistake, and this is the whole reason why I wanted to show this replay off, because this game was winnable despite the fact that I opened so weakly. The play here was to go Kit Kalos effect, targeting the dark, to special summon the Rhino, then send the tier name. With that tier name, fuse using Dark to make Mud Dragon. Attack with everything, overlay for Dweller in main phase two, and now I have Scream, Kit Kalos, Bullets Kit Kalos to be precise, and a Dweller for their turn that won't be able to be stopped as they won't be able to impermit. This would have ensured that I could at the very least live the next turn, as the only card that I know in Bullet's hand is Rhino Heart, and Rhino Heart does not beat Dweller, even with Scream and Sullyak on the field. Especially since I have my own Scream. But I didn't do that. And it cost me the game. So 
So this is one of those situations of do as I say, not as I do. We take them and we keep going, right? Don't make the same mistake twice. My round seven game was against Mount Fuji. They really wanted that run back from week five. But spoiler alert, as you can see here in this replay, sorry Fuji, you can't beat me. Give up. So Fuji won the coin toss, and I've actually opened a pretty strong hand for going second. I have max C and imperm. I'll have a cross out, which can be used to cross out like a Sullyic, for example. And I have a Keldo. So this makes any fairy a live top deck. It's not so bad. Fuji has opened Scream, Perlorino, Tactics, Mudora, and Maxi. Fuji opened Scream, Tactics, Perlorino, and Maxi. Going first. I thought I was toast. So here I obviously maxi, this resolves. And I'm able to imperm the kit and draw into a Merli, so that's some engine. Fuji elects to use planet to pop the scream here. I can get behind this play. There are three things that this can convert to. You can either choose to not pop the scream and just leave it on board that's certainly an option you can choose to pop the scream and search trap card so you have a choice of either sullyic or crime in my opinion the strongest choice here would be to search sullyic you're gonna get a search off the kit and you can get a search off the screen so assuming the kit does not get impermed you can search a scream with kit and then search a sullyic with scream that said the kit got imperfed. Fuji elects to use their only search on crime instead. And I really disagree with this decision. So Fuji looks at my hand and rips the only tier name, and then they set crime. I understand the thought process behind searching crime, you know you have talents, you know you're going to be able to look at my hand. A counter trap is certainly very strong, and it will provide you a way to get that Mudora out of your hand for an additional interruption. That said, the problem with this line is that you are leaving yourself with absolutely no follow-up. This kit can do nothing, because there are no tier names in your graveyard. So if you don't top deck a tier name from this position, even if I don't clear the board, it's still not game. Personally, I think Sullyic, while not the strongest choice in terms of being an interruption, is the choice that generates the most follow-up. And follow-up is one of the important factors that determines who's going to win the mirror match. Fuji activates Max C in draw phase. I top deck a Snow. I thought a lot about what to do here. Um, do I cross out the maxi? There's no reason to do that. I don't have any special summons this turn anyway. Once again, joke's on you. I don't have anything playable. Mission failed. I could cross out the crime, or Book of Moon the kit and beat over it. Sure. But then I'm just gonna have to deal with crime again next turn, or on the turn after that. That's not very advantageous. So what I instead decide to do is I'm going to normal summon Snow, activate its effect to try to Book of Moon the kit, Fuji's going to read my play, and they're going to choose to crime it, and I anticipated it's going to get crimed. But the way I saw it is, if this last card in hand is a tier name, I lose anyway. They're going to have the follow-up next turn. If that card in hand is not a tier name, then they're top decking, and I can buy myself one more turn, and I don't have to deal with crime anymore. So I'm putting all of my gamble on this last card in Fuji's hand not being playable. As I suspected, it wasn't, and suddenly, Fuji's top decking. They have control of the board, but let's see who top decks first. Mm -hmm. 
They don't call me the witch from Perla Rhino for nothing. Adding Siren there is just much more resilient as normal summoning Rhino loses to a lot. Most notably, the shufflers that I already know are in Fuji's graveyard. So my only hope here really is to trade shufflers and pop the Perla Rhino with my own then crash into the kit. Using Sullyak here would do nothing as I do not have a tier name in Graveyard to fuse with. This position you can clearly see what's going to happen it was a great game fuji but like i said not gonna beat me and my last game of the tournament was against shodao shodao has won the coin toss they've opened sullyak scream heartbeat kelbeck and Merly. and i have ash hoffness agito tactics and crime So since Shadow doesn't hit anything off of the Merlion Scream, they decide to activate Agito. And I think it's a fairly correct choice. You have a lot of good hits, and you have one of each Shuffler in the graveyard, so frankly you're prepared for whatever I could possibly hit off of it. I do not hit any Shufflers, but at least I hit my own Miller, so maybe I can continue playing from here. Shadow elects not to shuffle back, which I found pretty surprising. Right now, I'm just desperately trying to keep Shadow off of Dweller. This is a little trick that you gotta learn. Hand effects in Master Duel, for some reason, are considered like quick effects. So you could actually use them after you've used all of your triggers and after your opponent has used quick effects. One of the nice things that Agito can do is that if your opponent uses a shuffler to target one of your own shufflers, if Agito has a window of activation on that chain, you can chain Agito to that and then Agito can reborn the shuffler that your opponent was going to shuffle back. I make this to Pelia here and then immediately fire off to prevent Kit from being able to use its effect. Again, I'm just trying to stop Dweller. And this is exactly the reason why you have to fire off this to Pelia right away. You cannot wait for Kit to activate its effect. Since Shadow had a level 2 on board, they could threaten Elf and give it targeting protection. But at this point, the targeting protection no longer matters.
I fire off my Mudora here as I'm gonna be able to put back all of Shadow's level twos and I'll be able to put back my own planet as well. Sometimes you don't wanna put cards back into your deck that are bad mills, but if you've hit the end of the turn where you will no longer be milling, you might as well put good top decks back in your deck. I had an Ash Blossom ready for the scream, but I certainly was very afraid of the Hoffness Mills. As you can see, I do not have a Shuffler for that. But the whole time I was just expecting Scream to get triggered, and then I could just Ash Blossom to Scream, and then I was home free. The Hoffness made things a little dicey. Fortunately, the Hoffness didn't hit. We'll never find out if the Scream hit because Ash Blossom's a really good card. I attack over all the tier cards first, that way the crime is turned off. And what do you know, I haven't even normal summoned yet. Not to mention, that talent is live. I don't repeat the same mistake twice, just like I alluded to earlier. This time I will end on my opponent's Kid Kalos and Dweller. No top deck will save them. Well, that was the end of the replay analysis. Ignore the glow up, I'm recording this on a different day. Um, I hope you enjoyed, I hope that you learned something. And yeah, wish me luck in next week's MCS. I hope to do better next time. Still gunning for that second W. And make sure to follow all my social media links down below. Check me out on Twitch and have a nice day. Bye-bye.